Hello, this week I thought I'd show you an idea that I've had um, for something I've come across at a local pound saver store. It's basically um, some kind of doormat. Um, I, th I think it was about three, three quid, four quid at most. But it's uh, rubber backed. And it's very thin. But the thing that interested me was when I closed in on it, I'll see if I can show you. The actual thread on it looks very much like cobblestones. So what I'm hoping to do is cut it into road strips and I can use it in addition with the roads that I've already got. Now, whether this actually um, works, I'm not quite sure, but I thought I'd bring you along on my journey just to see whether it's worthwhile. I mean, what I will do is, once I've cut it into strips, I'll look at spraying it. Um, perhaps a, a grey or even a muddy path, but certainly those... The weave does suggest cobbles, so it might be worth going with the grey. But as I say, I'll I'll cut it into strips, and then we'll move on from there. Having cut it, I've managed to get five strips from the uh, mat, and as you can see, there's very little wastage. Obviously what I have got though is a choice because on these pieces you can see that I've got a long length of uninterrupted road before the pattern. Now there's a couple of ideas I've had. I could just cut off the pattern piece at either end and I'm still going to have a long strip of road that I can cut to sizes that I need it. The other option is to really darken the material and then bring it back to light to try and hide it. But I think, to be honest, that's probably going to be a lot more trouble than it's worth. So if I do go with these as grey roads, I think I will probably just cut the end patterns off of each strip. That said, I've ended up with two patterns down the side of the mat, uh, two strips that are down the side of the mat that are just entirely patterned. Now with this, um, I'm looking at two options really. I could make a decision to use this one as a muddy road and in which case I could then paint it with some brown paint mixed with Mod Podge and then add bits of grit into it to give it more of a, a earth road look and also completely hide that pattern. However, looking at the other side, the rubberized side, when I close right in on that, that again has got a very road looking pattern on it. So I'm not sure I, I could consider using this this side as the road and again grade up or stick with it as being the rubberized because that way when I lay it on the map it's not going to move. So that's just a decision I've got to make. But um, I'll have a bit of a think about it. And then uh, I'll come back and I'll show you some of the ideas that I've come up with. On this first strip, I've uh, given it a quite a thick coat of my Mod Podge and brown paint mixture. And I'm just going to experiment with... I've got some scatter here, um, a sawdust scatter earth ground that I got from Luke's apps 
So I'm going to try sprinkling a bit of that on. I know you can still see the pattern coming through. Um, and I will be painting it again. But I thought if I could sprinkle some of this on while the first coat's still wet, I can then do the second coat over the top. I'll use these as my mud roads. And then do what I said with the other ones and just cut the end pattern off. And then I can grey the other ones and have them as road. But this way, you know, I'm keeping the rubber backing face down. So that will help, you know, to stop it from sliding and moving around on the games table. I'm only sprinkling a light layer of this. I will let it sit for a bit and then I'll tap and let it, you know, tap off any really loose and let it thoroughly dry before I give it the next coat. And if I keep it thin, Obviously, I still have the benefit being able to roll it up to save on space. Because up to now, I've been making do with a lot of uh, lengths of road that I couldn't um, I couldn't roll them up because they were, they were on hardboard or something like that. So I'd got to store it in that way. Well, this will help with my storage problems as well. I know I've got the... Uh, lengths of rubberized road that I got from Deep Cut Studios but you always need a few other different types so I just thought this would be worth worth trying right I'll leave that there for now and I'll, I'll go and do some of the others and then I'll bring you back later on right now what I've done with the three long strips I've actually given them a coat of matte black and then a fairly heavy dusting of some army painter grey and I think most of the patterns at the end seems to have covered I mean I'm not finished with it yet but it, that's given me a good base for the road and the black that I used was the Paint Factory matte, matte finish. And then as I say, I'd got a bit left over from the soldiers, so I'll give it a dusting of the Army Painter Uniform Grey. But so far it's not looking too bad. And if I close in, you can still see that nice pattern that it's got. It does give a suggestion of cobbles. It's not absolutely perfect, but a table eye view of it is pretty convincing. Right, I'll come back to them a little bit later. Right, if we take a look at the two that I sprinkled the soil on, what I've actually done is let that dry off and then I've given it a quick coat, quick spray of uh, sealant, PVA sealant, and then uh, sprinkled a tiny bit more of the dust on it and then. Uh, I gave it a little dusting of Desert Yellow Army Paint Spray and now I'm going to set that to dry and then we'll take another look at it. At this point I came up with an idea of perhaps edging the strips that I was making and as well as that I decided to give them another coat of Mod Podge before adding a little bit more material but at the same time trying to keep it thin so I could still roll them up at the end of play. And uh, I decided to do three 
with the ice finish uh, with a bit of a track running up the centre and then another two uh, with a grass trim and grass running up the centre so but unfortunately I didn't catch any of that on camera it was such a fast flowing idea and I thought I'll just go with it and see but luckily I did manage to capture these a uh, couple of stills that we're looking at. So you can get a flavour for what I actually did. You can see that it's it's fixed really well to the carpet strips. And there's no hint of the pattern that was showing through before. So what I've actually done is obviously made up three snowy roads. And then I've gone for two with a grass trim to the edge. I'll put a little centre islands of grass that you get between tracks and things. Now obviously I could put a lot more detail into this and put some tufts on the side. I may even just uh, give it some extra paint uh, thin layers of paint on some of the muddy one just to give it a bit more of the look and maybe even on the on the snow roads but I don't want to add too many bulky details because one of the benefits of this quick and easy road is if I can pan back a little bit if you bear with me I'm doing this one handed is that you can roll it up and there you have it so storage is brilliant no you know it's not going to take up a lot of space and with the non-slip surface on the back that we looked at it, it lies down on a mat really well, doesn't move around when you're playing with it. And then when you want it, you can just roll it back out. Oops, sorry. So... Just as some simple roads, I think I'll probably leave them at that. But as I say, it's it's down to personal choice and what space you've got. Yeah, if you if you wanted to add a few tufts and even static grass, it it could look a lot better, a lot more effective. But for me, the convenience of being able to roll it up and roll it away when I'm finished playing with it, it's ideal. Right, I'll just leave you with a few photographs uh, so you can have a closer look at the actual finish on the mats themselves.